What is up, people? Welcome back. We talked fiscal policy in Unit 3, we did monetary policy in Unit 4, but now to kick off Unit 5, we'll do both fiscal and monetary policy at the same time. Make sure to smash that like button and to subscribe while the music plays. All right, so I've got some good news for you. A lot of this lesson is basically a review, so that's awesome. Okay, so we know that an economy has business cycles and that it goes through phases of expansions and contractions. And we know that there is often a desire by policymakers to attempt to smooth out the business cycle through active stabilization policies. Specifically, when an economy is in a recessionary gap and actual output is less than potential output, then expansionary policy is called for. Whereas in response to inflationary gaps, where actual output is greater than potential output, then contractionary policy will be used. But then as we know, there are both fiscal and monetary policies, and each of these can either be expansionary or contractionary. So let's review these for just a moment. Fiscal policy refers to government tax and spending policies, while monetary policy sets the money supply and the interest rates. If there's a recessionary gap, Congress and the President can use fiscal policy to restore the economy to the full employment level of output, by cutting taxes, increasing spending, or increasing transfers. Meanwhile, the central bank, in the US it's the Federal Reserve, can use monetary policy to achieve the same goal by increasing the money supply and lowering interest rates. Now, whether fiscal or monetary policy are used, they will both cause the AD curve to shift to the right, bringing the economy back to potential output and the unemployment rate back to the natural rate of unemployment. If there's an inflationary gap, it's the same story in reverse. Pause the video if you need to take notes on the specifics. But the main story is that fiscal or monetary policy should be contractionary, and this will shift the AD curve left, again bringing the economy back into long-run equilibrium. Okay, so that was a review, and hopefully that's how it felt. But either way, what we're considering now is that in the real world, fiscal and monetary policy decisions are both constantly being made, and sometimes they may be more or less harmonious. So this section is all about combinations of fiscal and monetary policies on a few different variables. My suggestion is not to focus on memorizing this, but rather to make sure you understand how they each act on their own so then you can figure out the combinations. Okay, so we've actually already established what happens to AD, price level, and real output in the short run. So what we're really left with is interest rates and bond prices. And I know that you remember that interest rates and bond prices are inversely related. So we really just need to figure out what happens to interest rates, and then we'll know what happens to bond prices. Let's start with monetary policy and interest rates, since this is also basically a review. We used two graphs to show expansionary monetary policy, the money market and ADAS models. We start on the money market model by shifting the MS curve to the right, lowering the nominal interest rate. And as we established earlier, this lower interest rate then increases investment and consumer spending, which shifts the AD curve to the right. And since interest rates are lower, that means that bond prices are higher. Easy peasy. Contractionary monetary policy, of course, shifts the MS curve left, raising nominal interest rates and lowering bond prices. And AD does what we said it would do. Pretty straightforward. All right, now the new stuff. Fiscal policy and interest rates. There are actually two ways to do this, but one of them I'm not really supposed to teach you until the 5.5 lesson about crowding out, so I'll do it the other way the one that you kind of already learned if you read between the lines back in Unit 4. With fiscal policy, we're going to start with the ADAS model, and then see how what happens on this model affects the money market model. The order we go in matters, and you'll see why. Okay, so let's do expansionary fiscal policy, shifting AD curve to the right. The price level and real output both increase. The question is, how will this affect the money market? We know that this won't affect the money supply curve since only actions of the Federal Reserve affect the money supply, so it must be money demand that's impacted. And if you think back to what shifts the money demand curve, the two biggest things are changes in the price level and real output. The demand for money is positively related to both P and Y, so since P and Y both increase as a result of expansionary fiscal policy, money demand increases, shifting the MD curve to the right and raising the nominal interest rate and lowering bond prices. If we look at contractionary fiscal policy, same idea. AD shifts left, lowering the price level and real output. This in turn reduces the demand for money, leading to a lower nominal interest rate and raising bond prices. Here's the important thing. Notice what this means for our policy combinations. 
assume that both fiscal and monetary policy are expansionary. As expected, A, D, P, and Y all increase, but notice that it's unclear what will happen to interest rates. Monetary policy is pushing rates down, while fiscal policy is pushing them back up. So this combo might be useful if the goal is to definitely increase output, but leave interest rates relatively unchanged. Interestingly, if we make combos where one policy is expansionary and the other is contractionary, the opposite situation emerges. We know what will happen to interest rates, but now we aren't so sure about A, D, Y, and P anymore. I'll warn you that test questions on this section can be sneaky tough sometimes, so be careful, think them through. You can do it, just think of each policy in isolation and then compare what's similar and different about their outcomes. All right, well, that's it for this one. Until next time, this has been a La Money production. Thanks again for watching. Make sure to like, subscribe, ring the bell, and check out the description for a link to the answers to the practice questions, as well as a great review book I've written for you. And I will see you in the next video.